Hello and welcome to this eBase XI video tutorial. My name is John Brantford and I'm a consultant for eBase Technology and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how eBase XI can be used to develop rich internet applications. If you're not familiar with the term rich internet application, these are applications that run in a web browser using a combination of standards like HTML, CSS, JavaScript and Ajax to create the appearance of working like a desktop application. Today's websites are becoming increasingly interactive. Modern browsers contain powerful scripting engines which can be used to interact with users to provide rich, engaging and immersive interfaces. Functionality previously only found in dedicated programs running on the user's machine can now be implemented using standard web browsers. As the future of web applications moves towards creating richer user experiences, web developers are increasingly turning to tools to ease the complexities and maintenance overhead. There are several JavaScript libraries available, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. I'm not going to say which one is better than the other as far as features is concerned, because ultimately it doesn't really matter. What matters most is what library is getting used more than the others. Take a look at this Google Trends graph of the five most popular JavaScript libraries. It is apparent that jQuery has become the library of choice for web developers and is fast becoming the first choice for programmers looking to ease their client-side development and create rich internet applications quickly and efficiently. At eBase, we're big fans of jQuery. Its ethos of write less, do more, its simplicity and its ease of use all fit right in with the agile development philosophy that underpins the XI platform. Let's take a look at how eBase XI, in conjunction with jQuery, can assist you in the creation of rich internet applications. eBase XI version 4.3 has excellent support for your favorite JavaScript libraries and provides a fast and easy way for you to associate scripts with your web applications. Scripts can be associated with your application at three levels. The presentation template, the application, or the individual page. Let's take a look at how this works. An XI presentation template is essentially a skin or theme for your applications. It lives separately to the web application and provides a reasonable set of styling rules that can be applied to multiple projects. It also has a web resources section enabling you to plug in your scripts. These can be files hosted on your own server or you can link to an external file for example, a content delivery network like jQuery, Google or Microsoft. The order in which you attach scripts in the configuration window is important, as this is how XI will add them to the page. Once you have configured the presentation template, you then need to attach it to your web application to grant it access to any associated styles and scripts. Style sheets and scripts can also be added at the web application and individual page level. Web apps can have multiple pages. Developers also have the option to disable any of the inherited web resources at these levels. Typically, you would associate any global scripts at the presentation template level, as these will be shared across all applications that link to it. I've attached the jQuery core library and the jQuery UI specific JavaScript file. You would then attach specific scripts for application or page level plugins at the relevant point. A client script is a special eBase XI script that is destined to be executed on the browser. Perhaps most often these are JavaScripts, but scripts written in any scripting language supported by the target browser can be created via the client script editor. Like the external scripts previously discussed, client scripts can be associated with any number of pages, so a library of functions can be developed once and then reused across your entire project whether this is a simple web application or a full-blown website. eBase XI also helps to hook the script into events the browser generates in response to user interactions on the page, 
allowing the pages to interact with the user. These event handlers will be covered in more detail later in this video. Client and external scripts often need to find and manipulate elements within the browser's DOM. Therefore, it is important that we have the ability to identify individual HTML elements. In eBase XI, every appropriate control has an HTML element properties assistant that can be used to add identifiers, known as locators, to the control. There are two main types of locator, ID and class. With the ID, the name specified here is attached as the ID attribute of the target element. IDs must be unique within a page. Classes are appended as classes to the target element. They do not have to be unique and can be used to easily identify groups of elements. You could also use the new HTML5 custom attributes as a selector if you wished. If you use these, be sure you are using the correct doc type and that the target browser has support for the new HTML5 features you are using. User actions, for example a mouse over or click, are linked to scripts via events. In response to these user actions, the browser will generate a series of events on the HTML elements with which the user is interacting. For each event on each element, the browser will execute any scripting associated with the event. Custom event handlers are eBase XI's way of mapping these events to the scripting code the browser should execute. Like locators, Event handlers can be added to selected HTML elements of a control via the control's HTML element properties assistant. There are two main types of event handler, HTML event handlers. These provide a mapping for standard HTML events, for example an on-click event generated by pressing a button. And jQuery event handlers. If jQuery has been associated with the page, then additional jQuery specific events are available to assign to user interactions with the web application. Now we have covered the basics of what eBase XI can do to assist you in the creation of rich internet applications, let's put together a few examples. For this I will be using some of the themable widgets available from the jQuery UI framework. The first change I'll make is to remove the hyperlink control and replace this with an eBase button control. I will be styling my application using the Cupertino theme from jQuery UI. I need to attach a selector to the button so I can identify this in my code and transform it from a standard button into an enhanced button with multiple rollover states. We'll now add the necessary code to the client script. With all this in place, let's run the form and see how it looks. The next enhancement I want to add is a dialog pop-up window for reading the full article when the button is clicked. I'll add in a new panel to the bottom of the page and copy into a HTML control the full article's text. I then need to give this panel a selector. I'll remove some of the text from the visible article on the page so users need to use the read full article button. We'll now add the necessary code to the client script. We start by telling jQuery to hide the full article panel. I then create a function to be called when the user clicks the button. This locates my hidden panel and invokes the jQuery UI dialog method to create the visual pop-up effect. Finally, I need to add a click event to the button. This is what calls my full article function. 
You could also choose to register a click event for the button directly within the jQuery initialization code. Let's run the form to see how this looks. As part of my page, I want to include a calendar for visitors to use. Rather than having to click into a date field to open the calendar, I'll make it display inline so the calendar is shown directly on the page. To do this, I need to add in a new panel to the What's New section. I'll give it a little bit of padding using the Styling Assistant. I then assign the Selector class of Date Picker. We'll now add the necessary code to the client script. When using the jQuery UI calendar, you can either attach it directly to an input field to have it display when the user clicks into the field or on a calendar icon, or you can add the selector to a standard div element and it will display in line. Let's run the form to see how it looks. The last enhancement I want to make to my application is to include an accordion widget within the article section. This will enable news content to be hidden away until the user clicks to read it. To save time, I will copy in a pre-created page section. This is built using a H3 tag with a link element inside, followed by a panel with a paragraph tag holding the news content. There are three repeated sections for this example. Like with all of the previous page enhancements, I need to give the page element a locator for jQuery to act on. I will assign a locator class of Accordion. We'll now add the necessary code to the client script. Let's run the form to see how this looks. All of the widgets I have used in the examples have just had a basic initialization. There are numerous configurations and parameter settings that can be turned on and off to create more advanced and interactive widgets. Check out the jQuery UI website for a full API and check out the XI UI library for further examples. That's all I plan to cover for this introduction video tutorial. There is a lot you can do with eBase XI and jQuery, and more in-depth tutorials will be available soon. For more examples, check out the XI UI library on the website. For now, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and if you have any questions regarding the use of eBase XI with jQuery or the jQuery UI framework, please contact us via the website. Thank you for your time, and please visit the eBase Resource Center to discover more about what eBase XI can do for you.